Hello and welcome to my commentary guide on Ashen's Cottage. I'm going to explain my building process, how I made things, and other choices that went behind the scenes for this build. So let's start with the living room. The fire is made from these iron torches. The wood burning fireplace has been something I've been wanting to make for a while and thankfully we got some indoor firewood finally. I used two clay drawer tables at the top and bottom to make a gentle curve. The bottom of the fireplace looks slightly raised up and I think it gives a bit of an antique look to my fireplace. And this is the log rack. Rather than hiding a lot of the metal bracketing, I worked around it with wood slat partitions, both by raising one higher and one lower, and then I walled it off with white rectangular walls. Let me try and grab this wall. This space is really tight. <laughs> I'm quite proud of this one. It's exactly how I wanted it to look. I had considered a hang and oven to ventilate at the top, but I didn't like how it looked. So onto these windows. They're quite simple. It's a cracked arch window with a plasma escape. And underneath is a little low seating area made from a hanging cupboard. Oh, one last thing. I also want to mention I added another window behind everything just for some extra lighting during the day. This coffee table is made from two pastry cupboards with the Glade Cartonne underneath as a base. You spawn into the living room, so I made room for that by moving the coffee table off to the side, and it looks like you're having a chat with someone in the other chair. Here is my real fake door. <laughs> I went with the Dutch door made of wood slats that opened at the top. Originally, I wanted the door to be opening into the house rather than outside, but I planned a bit poorly with the slow ceiling. This side window is made with a mahogany bunk bed, so only the curtain shows a bit. You'll notice that I use this bunk bed a lot in the build. And just a phasmascape showing the outside again with the window hidden behind my open window. Here's another log rack underneath my manor counter shelves. I wanted it to look like I chopped my own wood. <laughs> This country style bench is something I've used a few times. The back is made from a bread rack with wooden slats behind and for the arms. I used two divins, dyed them corpse blue, and hid everything with two hanging bookshelves. I changed the look of the manor harpsichord by adding a hanging wardrobe and turned it into an upright piano. I tend to have a piano in my personal build because I played for over 10 years and I always say it's nice when you can see someone's personality in a house and this is something about me. <laughs> On to the kitchen. And yes, I know this is a lot of ice boxes. <laughs> My FC mates say that I have deep pockets. I arranged the ice boxes in a way that made sense for cupboard width. And I even put one under the sink so only the drawer shows. The sink itself mimics a farmhouse sink and it's just a simple wall. The faucet is made of a manor counter and wood slat and I'm using hanging bookshelves for my countertops. There is a silphic dining table for a little rug under the sink, and I use this one a lot for a cottage look. The stove burners are made from temple night pieces, and I used three and saved on one with the Ashgardian stove. The backsplash is made of more manor counters because I prefer the texture and color of this brick, and plus I made 30 of these a long time ago and I need to use them. If I can manage to grab one of these, I can show you that the oven front is made from three classical dressers. I swear I'm good at grabbing this any day now. <laughs> They're placed normally on the ground and I covered the wooden bits with an apothecary's workbench. This stove was made to look a bit Victorian and it's a style of oven that I've been trying to make for almost three years now. I think my favorite bit is the most subtle and it's the glade drawer table at the bottom and the logs underneath. The kitchen was actually the most difficult to make as it almost shares a wall and floor with the bedroom behind it. 
I had to really consider how many items stick out and how far and had to limit the height of things so it wouldn't show in the bedroom. These stairs lead to the attic bedroom. It was always meant to be tiny and cramped to mimic a tiny attic space. I wanted to capture the sloped ceiling effect and how it starts in the hallway and changes the layout of the room. The room is mostly made of wooden skylights and it was incredibly difficult to put everything in place, but it was important to me to show the beams and rustic wood paneling. So the bed, it's cute, right? <laughs> I love it. I used an oasis bed for the base because it has a pretty lacy look and is the closest thing I'll get to a doily blanket. The silphic counter makes this lace pattern in the middle of the bed. The rest of the bed is made of log racks for the metal headboard and an apothecary's workbench at the front and back so it's consistent in width. The window went through so many changes, it's unreal. It started out on a different wall and then it became a window seat so it was really low. Then I had left it open. I messed with curtains. I finally got so sick of just dealing with it that I redid the whole entire bedroom and I put the window behind the bed, obviously. And I just used this ivy curtain with a spotlight so it looks like the sun is shining through and casting shadows across the blankets. I think this final version looks the best. Oh wait, I'm digging up more trauma. <laughs> I forgot how difficult these paintings were. Oat Milk first made this concept of angling picture frames to adjust the size, and I knew I wanted this for my house. But why did I choose to do this in the air? It was so incredibly difficult to find the correct angle, and I'm still not completely happy with the painting on the right, but I have to let some things go. At this point in the build, when I add details, my slots were really suffering. So I just went with some potted plants and a few papers and tea. I hope you get the idea I'm underslept and busy reading. These are the skylights I mentioned before. I wanted the beams to look consistent enough and the same width and material, so I committed really hard here. <laughs> This took the most adjusting and work because I wanted the walk up to the attic to show the low slope in the ceiling. Ah, uh, right, this window. Every hallway needs something in it, right? The concept is the same, just an open window, but this time I used two bunk beds. And now the conclusion of this tour. I'm just going to walk through it and show the space relative to my character. When I build for myself, I make a conscious decision how high furniture should be relative to my size. As a tall Viera, I like to think that homes and furniture isn't exactly meant for me, so I actually tend to build a bit smaller. You'll see the tables are low, and the countertops just a tad bit too short. It's all intentional and I guess is my own little immersion with housing. <laughs> I've been trying to develop some more housing strategies to make more space, I guess in my own way, by adding more levels and rooms. I don't know if they'll ever give us more item slots, and I found myself building tiny boxes for all those extra details, but I've been of the mind to roam a bit more. Thanks for watching and listening to me ramble. If you'd like to watch a clean and pretty walkthrough of my house, I'll have a link in the description for that. Until next time, bye!